and I want you to answer these problems that I'm going to show. Make sure that um, this particular exercise is basically to check whether you um, are still remembering the basic antiderivative and derivative rules that we've had before. If you can get all of them correctly, that means you're doing your work on practicing your rules in answering calculus problems. So let's see if you guys are doing your homework. Can you please give me the derivative of this function? function? And you can unmute yourself because right now I'm on a different mode so I cannot see the chat box. So can you please just unmute yourself and tell me what your answer is? Zero. And that is correct. And again, in mathematics, you should know your constants and constants would come in any or many forms and sizes just like this. Two is an obvious constant, but for most students, pi or e, they would think that they are variables. Make sure you know your constants. How about this one? Can you please? Can you please? What is the derivative of secant 5x? Can you please say your answer? Secant is it secant? And 5x times 5. 5 secant 5x tan 5x? Yes. Maybe. And yes. So the derivative of sec secant u is secant u tan u du dx. So make sure you know that. Next. Hmm. What is the antiderivative of secant 5x times cosine x dx from 4 to 4? People are like, we haven't done that yet. <laughs> is there anyone here who has an answer? Take a, take a guess. Shoot it. I guess no one. The answer is? Zero. So notice that the integral sign, we have the lower limit and the upper limit. If your lower limit and your upper limit in any integral function, when they are the same, the answer to that antiderivative is going to be zero. So this is one form of definite integral. What we were working on last week, we call it indefinite integral because there's no lower limit and upper limit. And we're going to be working on that probably next week, how to find or work on problems involving definite integrals. So remember, one of the properties of a definite integration is that when the lower limit and the upper limit are the same, the answer is zero. Give me this. What is the integral of x to the negative 1 dx? Unmute yourself if you know the answer. Undefined. Michael says undefined. Is there anyone here who has a different answer? I was saying, Ellen, uh, yeah. I think what? Ellen what? Just Ellen X? No, it's uh, <laughs> the, the bars. Shoot, I Ellen, Ellen, the um, absolute value of X. All right. Here we go. I concur. <laughs> Ln X plus C or Ellen absolute value of X plus C. And this is a common error that most students do. Remember um, last week, I gave you this particular problem and we solved it using the power rule and it turned out to be x to the zero all over zero. So in um, calculus, make sure that you will remember this particular properties in your rule. x to the negative one is ln of x plus c. Next. 
give me the ddx, the derivative, not the integral, but the derivative of 5e e squared. Zero. Zero. Good job. Now you know your constants. So make sure that you are aware of your constants because if you know your symbols in mathematics, you'll gain more confidence in answering problems like this. How about this? Derivative. If you have an answer, just say it. I'd say negative three X sine X. Negative three cosine X squared sine X. Oh, so with the square or without the square? So in this particular case, cosine cube x or cosine to the three x can be modified into cosine x raised to three. Remember that in trigonometry, there are two ways on how to write down exponents. Sometimes it's in between the trig function and the function. Sometimes it's inside the parentheses. So one version of this is cosine x raised to three. So if that's the case, we'll see it clearly that we can use the chain rule. And the chain rule is bring down the three, copy the inside, raise to two times the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of cosine x is, is it negative, negative sine x? Sine. Yes. So that's why it's negative three cosine squared x sine x, I think. Oh, there. So remember, in calculus or in any math problems, notations are extremely important. So if you know how to write things in several ways in mathematics, it will be a lot easier for you to solve problems similar to this one. So know your notations. What about this? Simplify. I'm not asking for the derivative. I'm not asking for the antiderivative. But what I'm is the it. other best version of 1 over sine x? Cosecant. Yes. So make sure that you also know this because sometimes there will be questions like, what is the ddx of 1 over sine x? Or what is the antiderivative of this particular trig function that when you don't simplify it, it be, it's a little bit complicated or a little bit difficult to work with. But when you modify it, just like what we did a while ago, it becomes a lot easier. So know your formula so you can modify functions like this. How about this one? What is the simplest form of sine x all over cosine x? Tangent x. Yes. So that means if you um, see problems like ddx of sine x over cosine x, you know that by modifying it, you'll be able to solve for the derivative of tangent x, which is secant squared x. But right now, it's just simplifying, so it's, it should be easy. How about this one? What is the value? What is the actual value of tangent 45 degrees? One. One. Tangent 45 degrees is equal to one. And that is correct. So you also need to know at this point in the game, the basic values of your sine, cosine, and tangent function. So make sure you know your unit circle really well. And this one is another value of the unit circle. Tangent 45 is one. Uh, how about this? What is the antiderivative or the integral of pi pi squared dx? Five pi squared x. <laughs> Plus c. My bad, I was close. Uh, and that is correct. So it is also a constant. So you know that this is just five pi squared x plus the constant c. And again, the reason why we always have the constant c is because if we took the anterior, I mean, the derivative of this function, we know that the derivative of the function would be, someone is calling me, would have a constant and any constant, the derivative of that is going to be zero. Okay. And we're done. <laughs> we're done for the day. See you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> Here we are. Bye. No, we're not <laughs> done. Uh, how am I going to go back? All right. So today we're going to be working on um, U substitution. And you still remember your basic 
and to derivative rules. So today we're going to do or add another skill in our arsenal, and that is finding the derivative of some function that you think is impossible to work with. Let me find the antiderivative of 2x square root of 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, this one is a lot easier. What's your answer? No one answered? Um, okay. Well. Okay, let's answer this together. This is your second example. What is what is going to be my u in this function? One plus x squared. All right. And what is the derivative of my u? Two x. Dx. dx. Yes, don't forget that because that is important. So two x dx, and then we're going to modify this. And we are going to change this into 1 plus x squared. So we'll have 2x square root of u, right? Times dx, right? Yes. OK. Yeah. Now, what do you notice? Or you're not noticing anything? This is what I'm noticing. Boom, boom. What does it look like? The du. Yes. Well, that means you can replace that annoying 2x dx with just du. So now we have u to the 1 half du. Are you convinced? Yes. So now we're going to use the basic rule of antiderivative, right? Wow. 1 half plus 2 over 2. Um, <coughs> Plus two over two plus c, right? So now we have what's one half plus two over two? Three over two? Yeah. Two thirds u to the three over two plus c. But we need to um, be consistent with our function. So this is going to be two over three square root of one plus x squared raised to raised to three, right? Did I do my conversion correctly? Yes. All right. I got that same answer. Cool. Why didn't you say that? I was waiting for you to do this to show everybody else. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> OK, now um, let's do another one. Hopefully, like Michael, you'll be able to answer this correctly. Is that Michael? All right, I will. Yeah, it is. I'll answer the next one out loud. All right. But wait for them to complete it. If I say go, then you say it. OK, ready? Antiderivative of x to the third quantity 2 plus x to the fourth raised to the fifth power. Don't forget the dx. Again, in calculus notations. They are extremely important because that's part of the work. Okay. Show me the work. Yeah, I made a mistake. I chose the hard problem at the very beginning. That's why most of you were thinking this is a problem that's difficult to answer. No, that one is very advanced. I'll keep the parentheses and square root that to the five as my u, right? Yes. I'm just asking. Okay. Yes. Because your entire u is going to be the parentheses, right? That's why this is similar. This is a version of the chain rule in antiderivative. We don't call it chain rule. I mean, antiderivative of chain rule. We call this u substitution, but just for you to connect this with the previous lesson we did. So think about chain rule.
Is there anyone here who's absent? Alyssa, Alyssa, Catherine, David, Eternity, Hayden, Joey, Kiana, Marvin, Michael, Raul, everyone's present. Finally, 100% attendance. This time, you will have a constant because there is an annoying constant in your DU. I was gonna say, uh, I was gonna say X raised to the power of three plus one over three plus one. Say that again. Uh, X raised to the power of three plus one and then all over three plus one to start off on the uh, antiderivative. Uh, that's not what I got. Yeah, I got something different. Uh, I'm looking at a constant of one over 24. Yeah, that's what I got. You have that in your answer? 1 over 24? Yeah. Okay. If you have 1 over 24 anywhere in your answer, then probably you're doing it correctly. Now, let's answer this. Of course, we need, a, we need a U. And the U is the inside. 2 plus X to the 4. And the DU is 4 x cubed dx, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Modify. I will just modify the u, not everything else. I'll still copy x cubed. I'll still copy u to the fifth and dx, right? Now, what do you notice about this and this? Do we have something similar to our du? Yes or no? Mm, yeah. Yes, because we have x cubed dx. But what are we going to do with the annoying 4? Multiply by 1 fourth to both sides. 1 fourth, 1 fourth. So now we have 1 fourth du is equal to x cubed dx, right? So that means this x cubed dx will turn into 1 fourth du. Not just du, but 1 fourth du. So by modifying this again, we now have the integral of x cubed and du becomes one fourth du. So let's just say u to the fifth times one fourth times du, right? So what do we know about the constant rule? Get rid of it. I mean, ignore it for a while, put it outside and focus on u to the fifth du. And what is the derivative of u to the fifth du? I mean, antiderivative. U to, U to the 6 over 6 X plus C. Plus C, but we have a 1 fourth. So we have. U to the 6 over 24 plus 1 fourth C. Plus 1 fourth C. And can you simplify this? I mean, modify it. 2 plus X to the fourth, right? Yes. Yeah. Plus, now in um and um in integration or in integral, if we have a one fourth c or any constant with a constant, and it's since it's a constant with a constant, just write a constant. They're just the same. Okay. Okay. So that's why in most books or in my examples, I always write just the constant c because it's any constant. So just write c. But I don't want to um, confuse you with not using proper algebra because we're taking the antiderivative of this function and then the constant, so you need to distribute it afterwards. So just to make sure that you're doing or using the algebra right. Next. Oh, let's try this. Ready for a little bit more challenging problem? Oh, yes. Let's throw in. I'm ready to do some logic. 
<coughs> let's throw in some trig function. Uh, integral of secant squared 1 over x Is that the right function? Give me a sec. All over x squared dx. Ah! Okay. Show me that. It may seem impossible to solve, but remember, always start on something you already know, which is parentheses, right? Okay. Do that. U substitution is like solving a jigsaw puzzle. This was in the video. Oh, is this in the video? Yeah, it was. Okay. So now you can answer this without looking at the video. So try it. Because I'm pretty sure even if you copied it and watched it, some of you didn't really understand it. Now, let's see if you can now right. answer this on your own without looking at your notes. Were you able to answer this easy? I mean, without looking at your notes? Okay, I'll answer it with you. What's gonna be my use? There's so many functions here. What you am I going to use? <laughs> it's one over X. Yes, one over X. And let's modify it to X is equal to Okay. Because we don't want to use quotient rule. What is the derivative of x to the negative one? One negative over x squared. X to the negative two, right? Yeah. And let's modify it again. <clears throat> x to negative one over x squared dx, right? Yep. Okay. Now I'm ready to modify my original function. And into the integral of secant squared u over x squared dx. Now, what do you notice? Or are you not? Or are you not noticing anything? Okay, let me change it again. Integral of secant squared u times one over x squared dx. Are you seeing it now? Yes. Okay. So what am I going to do now? Change the one over x squared dx to du. Oh, oh I forgot that. <laughs> You're supposed to be du. Okay. My bad. All right. Not just to you, but to right here, negative, right? yeah. Yes, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative so that I can have an identical <coughs> one over x squared dx in my function, right? Mm -hmm. so this one is going to change into the integral of secant squared u times negative du, right? And we know that the negative is similar to a negative one, and a negative one is a constant, so let's set it aside. Can you now integrate secant squared u du? Yes or no? Yeah. What is the integral of secant squared u du? It's in our it's in our formula sheet. Negative tan u plus c. Yes. Negative tan u plus c or negative tan. 
And that is its antiderivative. Did you get it? Yes. I hope so. Okay, it's let's get it now. You're getting it now? Just a little bit. Good. Let, let's test it. All of you should get this right because this is an easy problem. What problem is this? Number four? Whatever. I, lo I lost track of time. Negative 15 x to the fourth. Negative 3x to the fifth minus 1 raised to the fifth dx. All right. Okay, can you please integrate this? I'm just throwing some numbers out there, but um, I got negative 3x to the fifth minus 1, all raised to the sixth, divided by 6 plus c. And that's, that's what I got too. I need to answer it anymore <laughs> because that's the correct answer. Or another version of that would be 1 over 6 and then the parentheses. So both of them would be... Okay. And for those... Of you who are wondering how they got that answer, u is negative 3x to the fifth minus 1. The derivative of that is negative 15x to the fourth dx, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. So I'll have the integral of negative 15x to the fourth u to the fifth dx. And I know that boom boom is boom boom. So I have u to the fifth. So this is an easy problem because it's pretty obvious they're there. So this is going to be uh, u to the 6 over 6 plus c, right? Yes. It has to be consistent. So it's 1 over 6 times negative 3x to the 5th minus 1 to the 6 plus c. I mean, you can write it as all over 6 or 1 6 outside. And again... In calculus, the more notations you are more comfortable on using, the better. Okay, let's have another one because practice is mastery. If you don't practice, if you're just sitting there, I don't know, watching Netflix and putting us on mute, shame on you. Let's answer. Let's answer this. The integral of 5x to the fourth plus 5, 2 over 3, times 20x dx. All right. Do that. 3 fifths times 5x4 plus 5 to the 5 thirds plus c. And that is correct. 3 over 5 times 5x4 <coughs> plus 5 times, I mean, raised to 5 over 3 plus the constant c. Do I need to show it? Okay, I'll show it. Since this is easy, u is 5x4 plus 5. The derivative of that is 4 times 5 is 20x dx, which is exactly that. So we have u to the um, two-thirds du, and the antiderivative of that is u to the five, five over three? Yeah. Five over three, three over five, plus c. And three over five, five x to the fourth plus five, five over three, plus c. All right. Now, notice that when I, when I was Starting to uh, work out problems on new substitution, I always do it step by step and I always show every single step even though I know I do a shortcut. So once you get comfortable with working on problems like this, you can use your shortcuts, but make sure that you are accurately working on those shortcuts really well. So it takes a while to be able to come up with your own technique. And to be able to do that, you need mastery. And speaking of mastery, let's have another one that it's a little bit more fun. 
the integral of five plus ln x to the fifth over x dx. All right. Take a shot. I forgot what the derivative to ln x is. All right, guys, help him. What's the derivative of ln x? Is it 1 over x? 1 over u du. So ln x is 1 over x. dx. Right? Thanks. And again, the more formula that you can remember, the better you will be in answering problems in calculus. And again, there's, there's no shortcut. You just need to practice it to be able to remember it. So calculus will only become easy if you can memorize as many formulas as you can. And that's not an easy task. Unless you see calculus every day, then it's easy. Okay, I got one over six times five plus ln x to the six plus c. And that yes. is correct. So, Problems like this can be a little bit um, intimidating because the function is weird and we're so used to just answering baby functions like polynomials or square root functions or parentheses functions. But when we are presented with problems like this, our first thought is that it's an impossible problem to solve. But if you know your derivative, this is constant, you know, it's zero, it's one over x dx. And that is our function that we can modify. So we have u to the fifth all over x dx. And we know that this is also u to the fifth times one over x times dx. That's another version of that function. And this is obviously the same as that. So taking the antiderivative is u to the sixth over six. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm doing shortcut this time. Let's, let's not skip a step. Integral of u to the fifth du. So we have um, u to the sixth over six plus c. So one six u is five plus ln x to the six plus c. Is that your answer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's make it more fun by throwing in some trig functions. The integral of 20x sine 5x squared minus 3 dx. Okay. Do that. That's 5x to the square. What is your u function in this problem? 5x squared minus 3. Yes. So that people can somewhere. That will be your u. OK. Now you're on your own.
you have an answer? Yeah, but I don't think it's right. Okay, tell me. I got two cosine five x squared minus three plus c. All right, so Rebecca says two cosine five x squared minus three plus c. Almost. I'm not calling Marvin, I'm just saying almost correct. <laughs> what do you think is missing here? Okay, let's answer this. Why is it almost? What's the derivative of this? What's the derivative of u? 10x dx. 10x dx. All right. So 10x dx, and let's change this into the antiderivative of 20x sine u dx, right? 10x dx dx x, but there's 20 right here. So how am I going to fit it in? Can you multiply both sides by two? Can I multiply both sides by two? <laughs> and yes, you are correct. Let's multiply both sides by two. So this will be two and two. So now we have two du equals 20x dx, right? And now we have an identical function, 20x dx, but this time it's not just going to be du, it's going to be 2du this time, right? So I'll have the integral of sine u times 2du, right? Did I do it right? Yeah. What am I gonna do next? Take out the constant. Yes. 2 integral of sine u du. Okay. Now, formula. What is the antiderivative of sine u du? Cosine u plus c. Is it cosine u plus c or negative cosine u plus c? Cosine u plus c. Is it, is it, is it, Positive cosine or negative cosine? It's positive cosine. Positive. Positive? No, it's negative. Yeah, I was going to say it's negative. It is negative, right? Can you please go back yes. to your notes? Yeah, I just did. It's I negative. Think my mind, it's negative. Yeah, it's negative. It's negative, right? That's why I said Rebecca almost got it because her answer is correct, but the sign is not correct. So that is important in calculus. Make sure that you know which one is negative and which one is positive because in derivative and antiderivative it switches. So this one should be 2 times negative cosine u plus c, right? So I'll have negative 2 cosine 5x squared minus 3 plus And that is the answer I'm looking for. Is there anyone here who got the same answer as me? I did at the same time. Good. <laughs> um, let's have another one. Ready? This is going to be the last problem for the day. And let's make it more fun. I'll throw in the integral of 6e raised to 3x cosine e to the 3x minus 5 dx. OK. What do you think is my u in this problem? E to the 3x minus 5. OK. Do your magic. Sine times e to the 3x minus 5. 6 sine. 
e to the three x minus five plus c. Okay, that's Rebecca's. Do you have? Is there anyone here who has a different answer? Yeah, I got two signs. Michael got two sine u plus c instead of six sine. Any other answer? That's what I got, the two sine. Marvin also got the same answer as Michael. Let's see, with Rebecca or the two guys? I don't know. It's the guys. What is the du, du in this problem? 3e3x. Three e Yes. Dx. Three x. Don't forget the dx. Okay. Now let's change this into a variable of copy, copy, change, copy. So this is the only thing we change. Now what do you notice? We have the dx. We have the e to the three x, but we don't have the six. So by two by both sides. Yes, we're going to do a little bit of algebra. Multiply this by 2, multiply this by 2. So now we have 2du is equal to 6e to the 3x dx, which is now identical to the function. So now our function will turn into the integral of cosine u. This whole thing will turn into what? 2 du. 2 du. And now, constant out. And we're looking for the integral or antiderivative of cosine u du. And what is the antiderivative of cosine u du? Sine u plus sine c. Sine u plus c. Sine u plus c. Um, is it negative or positive? Positive. Oh, not yet. 2 sine e to the 3x minus 5 plus c. All right, to be more politically correct. All right, and that's it. That's the only, um, the only challenge is, to be honest, it's the first problem because there's so many, um, so many layers on this problem and you really need to know your algebra to be able to do this. So we've done a lot of transformation in this problem. That's why it can be a little bit challenging. But the rest of the problems are pretty straightforward. Like this. All right. Oh, it's right here. I've been looking for this. Uh, open the chat box. And open the participants. So I would see all of you. Let me fix my desktop. Are you still there? Yes. Yes. Can you hear the noise in the background? No. No. Perfect. No. I guess I set up my mic correctly this time because there's construction going on in my house. Ooh. I had a water leak of all the time in the year. So my house is a mess. And I'm not happy. All right. Oh, there's that. All right. Okay. So you substitution, that's what we're going to be working on. So let's say, get your pen and paper ready. And we're going to solve for the integral of x square root of 2x minus 1 dx. 
So how do you find the antiderivative or the integral of this particular function? So this function would require us to use a different technique because obviously the function is a little bit more complex than the usual functions that we play with last week. And to work on this, we're going to modify this function so that we can use our basic integral rule to solve this problem. And to modify this function, we're going to set a variable u, that's why it's called u substitution. So in this case, most likely, we'll have problems like this, and we're going to have u substitution and change that into u. All right, so let's do that. So let's say u is equal to 2x minus 1. Since that is, the, uh, that is a more complex function between x and 2x minus 1, right? So what is the derivative of 2x minus 1? 2. Call it du. It is 2? Yes. Dx. Yes. And every time you take the derivative of a certain function, you just need to write the dx to, it is a command to uh, tell us that we already took the derivative of that function. That's why it's 2dx. Okay, now that we have u as 2x minus 1 and du as 2dx, we're going to modify this. And how do we modify this? In terms of u. So the new function will turn into antiderivative of x times the square root of u times dx, right? So we know that 2x minus 1 is equal to u, so we change it into u dx. Now, further modifying this, we'll have x times u to the 1 half times dx, right? Right? Yes. Okay, now the next problem is we have an annoying x and dx in the function. So what we can do is to further modify this so that it would work for us. So what we can do is to change the dx into this function. And how are we going to change it into that function? We're going to change it into multiply this by one half, multiply this by one half, and we'll have one du equals dx. Now we can change the dx into one half du. So we'll have the integral of x times u to the one half times du is now going to change into one half du du. But we still have an annoying x. How are we going to change our x in this function so that all of them will turn into a u function? Because remember, when we're trying to integrate or differentiate, we need to have a single variable. So can you, do you have an idea how we can change that x into a function of u? No. Do you solve the u and make it equal to x? Yes. Let's modify the function u is equal to x minus 1 and change it into an x. So let's do that. So now we'll have, geez, I chose a problem. It's too complex to begin with. I it's just in an easier one. Anyhow, if we're already here, might as well answer this. So u to x minus 1 can be changed in terms of u using algebra. So u equals 2x minus 1. Change it into an x. So we have u plus 1 equals 2x, right? Right? Yes. And then we have u plus 1 equals x times 1 half. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And now we're going to modify this x into the antiderivative of one u plus one, right? Because now it's in terms of x times u to the one half times one half times 
du. All right, now let's do a little bit of algebra. And that algebra is taking this constant right here and put it away. So let's put it away and let's have one fourth integral of u plus one times u to the one half times du. So now all we need to do is take the antiderivative of this function. Now, what do you think is the next algebra technique that I'm going to use to uh, take the antiderivative of this function? Distribute? Yes. I can distribute u to the one half to u and one, which means I'm going to add their exponents, right? So if I multiply this and this, this will be the integral of u to the one half plus one, right? Yes. Okay, law of exponents, you add exponents when you're multiplying this, and this one will turn into positive u to the one half, right? Du, and of course, don't forget your one fourth. Constant rule, ignore the constants and just deal with the functions later on. And now we have the integral of u to the, what is one half plus one? Three over two. Three over two plus u to the one half times du. Okay, now, don't forget the constant. We're going to be integrating each function with respect to u this time. So you will integrate this. So can you please give me the integral of u to the three over two and the integral of u to the one half? Of course, this is with respect to u, so du, 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 du. Okay, integrate. Are you done? What is the integral of u to the three over two? I got two fifths u to the five over two. Two. I got the same thing. Me too. Okay, so can I just copy it? <laughs> what did you get? Two over five? Yes, u to the five over two. And that is correct. What about the other one? U to the one half. Two thirds u to the three over two. Is there anyone here who has a different answer? And du part. The du part, once you take the antiderivative of that function, the du will disappear. It's just a plus c. But then we're going to multiply it. One over four, right? Because we still have the one fourth. So multiplying it by one fourth will have, this one is easier. Let's just distribute it. Two over? 20. Mm -hmm. One tenth. Or do you want to simplify it yet? Or? Two over 20 or one tenth? One over 10 u to the five over two plus one over six, six. plus one fourth c or a constant c times one fourth. All right, now we started with x function, so we need to return it back to an x function. So the final step is to replace all the u's with x. And what is the value of our u? 2x minus 1. Yes. So the final answer is 1 over 10, uh, 2x minus 1, to the 5 over 2, plus 1 over 6, 2x minus 1, 3 over 2, plus 1, 4, 6. Or just c, or a constant c, because it's just any constant. All right? Is it hard? <laughs> it is hard. I didn't expect it's going to be this hard. All right, I should have chose a, a, an easier or simpler problem. 
So I hope you got the idea of how to integrate with substitution. And I'm going to choose an easier function so that you don't get too traumatized with all of these beautiful work right here. Thank you. Okay, do this on your own. Forward and pretty simple. So your homework for tonight, or for this week, it's going to be all about you substitution. And again, practice, practice, practice. Because the next problem or the next um, work that we're gonna be working on will be a definite integration, which means the integral sign will have a lower limit and an upper limit. And that's what we're going to be working on next week. So do you have any question? Were you able to learn something today? Yes. Good. Oh, for sure. So for you not to lose it, practice and answer the um, practice exercises that I'm going to be posting in our uh, Canvas page. Answer them. Make sure you uh, work on that immediately because if you wait, you'll forget. Because I know you guys, you can easily forget things. All right, and that's it. No more questions. You so what are we doing today. for our final and other quizzes and stuff? When am I going to assign quizzes and stuff? I don't know. I'm not there yet still. We still have four weeks. So we still have four, um, we still have four meetings. I'm probably just gonna give you one quiz or one test uh, for, for this semester because because I want to, all right? So just one quiz. So this is an easy class. Well, not really. This is an easy class if you're coming in um, all the time because our attendance is graded. Now your homework and your quizzes, you can make it up if you missed it. Um, you're not gonna get 10 points, but it's better than zero points. And make sure to just be responsible with all your uh, submissions because if you're on time all the time, you'll earn your A in this class easily. Okay? So, uh, yeah, I don't have any problems. You said you're going to post the homework, right? Of course I will. I will post okay. it. It's not posted yet because I need to make sure that you know the skills needed for the items that I'm going to choose. And now that I'm confident that I taught you the skills, you just need to uh, show it to me through the homework. And I will post it, I'll post them right away. So you won't forget. All right, so thank you so much for coming. I appreciate your attendance. I'll see you all next week. And next week, different skill, new skill. And since you don't have any question, and this is recorded, and I'm going to end this now. Bye.